Dear brothers and sisters, today is the second Sunday of Lent and we celebrate the mystery of Christ's transfiguration on Mount Tabor. It was a wonderful experience for the three apostles who witnessed it so much so that Peter cried out, Lord, it is good to be here. Mark tells us that the garments of Jesus became radiant on that day in the eyes of the two apostles. When the incident came to an end, a cloud overshadowed them. We know that in Jewish thinking, the presence of God is regularly connected with the cloud. For example, Moses met God regularly in the cloud. It was in the cloud that God came to the tabernacle. We'll remember that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem when, the, when he knew that he would be killed. So going to the mountain top was to further meet with God as he always did <clears throat> when he was faced with some heavy tasks to perform. In other words, we could say he sought some assurance from his father. The appearance of Moses and Elijah seemed to have assured him to go on. It meant that they saw in him all that history had longed for and hoped for and looked forward to. The appearance of Moses and Elijah seemed to have assured him to go on. As Jesus had gone up the mountain to consult with God, God spoke to him. God told him what his will is. He confirmed him that he was on the right path. On the mountain of the Transfiguration, Jesus assured that he had chosen the right way. On the other hand, for the two disciples, that sight was something very precious and assuring. They had been shattered by Jesus' statement that he was going to Jerusalem to die. That seemed to them the complete negation of all that they understood of the Messiah. They were still bewildered and uncomp uncomprehending. What they saw on the mountain of the Transfiguration would give them something to hold on to, even when they could not understand. Cross or no cross, they had they heard God's voice acknowledge Jesus as his son. On that mountain, they surely witnessed the glory of Christ. If there was still any little doubt in them who Jesus was, that day that doubt was wiped away. They saw what happened at first hand. It was not a hearsay. This time on the mountain, they saw Christ glorified. And now they had the glory to tell to others. Yeah, rather, they had the story to tell to others. Jesus came down from that mountain with an assurance that God's purpose and will had been fulfilled. Lenten season, dear brothers and sisters, is a time for us to reflect on our lives. It is time for us to pray, fast, and give alms. It is a special time where we also have to climb that mountain of transfiguration which brings us closer to God. We have to do lots of introspection and see what we might be keeping in our hearts. If there are things that make us dirty, as Christ ever said, there is nothing that comes from outside a person that will make him dirty, but what comes from inside. It is that unwanted thing inside that we need to purify with prayer, fasting, and confession. Our hearts, after the transformation, need to glitter like the transfigured body of Christ. Besides prayer and fasting, Lent is about giving. In the second reading, St. Paul puts it clearly that God 
did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all. It would like uh, I would like to underline this purpose of giving. God gave in order that all should benefit. Here we see a very generous God, an unselfish God, a God who cares for all his children, and a God who wants to save his children by sacrificing his only begotten son. We are requested also during the Lenten season to be altruistic, to look outside ourselves and reach out to the poor and the needy. Allow me to compare the selfless giving of God to the purpose of the Bishop's Lenten appeal, which is giving for a purpose, giving so that many, since it can be all, may benefit. By now, we should all know that the money collected in the purple envelopes has a purpose for serving the bishops who are at the service of all. Not only the bishops get helped, but also through the charitable organizations, the bishops assist many who are in need. So that is why we are appealing to all the faithful to give generously so that as many people as possible can benefit. At times we have to sacrifice in order to give, just like Abraham in the first reading who went to sacrifice his only son in order to give him to God. And he was sacrificed all that he had, his only son, but God gave him back his son. And God will give you back and will increase in one way or another where you took from. Let us remember then to pray hard during this Lenten season also, especially for the defeat of the COVID pandemic so that our life can come back to normal. Paired with prayer is the observation of the COVID protocols. Put on our masks in public spaces, wash our hands regularly, and sanitize and observe the social distance so that we can be safe. May God grant you abundant blessings during this Lenten season. Amen.